Let's pivot to Illinois. Geo Baker's top storyline headed into this <laughs> preseason preview. Why is Illinois a team on your watch? Listen, Kofi Coburn is gone. In fact, like 10 players are gone. Their top five scorers are gone. This Illinois team, if you're a fan, you need a roster for the first couple of games just to like make sure you got the numbers and the names all correct here. It's going to be a different style of play, but what are you expecting to see out of Illinois, Geo? I mean, I really like the defensive versatility that they have, you know, with Matthew Meyer, Terrence Shannon Jr., Coleman Hawkins. I think they're going to be able to switch a lot of ball screens. It's going to be definitely going to be very different. But I think the thing about Coach Underwood is he's already shown he can adjust. Like, if you remember back like a few years, a few years back, they played a completely different defense before Kofi came, right, where they were all completely over their man, right? And he was able to adjust when Kofi came in, you know, change the entire defense. So I think anyone who thinks that he's not going to be able to adjust again uh, is is wrong, right? And I, I think that I'm just really excited about their team. You know, Matthew Meyer obviously has already won a national championship. Terrence Shannon, I think they won 30 games last year. So they're bringing in winning winning players. And I think Coleman Hawkins is going to be really good. I mean, super athletic, can shoot the ball, uh, very versatile. So I'm really excited to see them play. And I really like the freshman point guard too. I, I was watching a lot of his film. I know he's coming off of a, a torn ACL, I think, but um, you know, the way he just moves the ball, he's, he's very unselfish. Yep. Sky Clark. And I know Jeff, you had an opportunity to see him play. Why do the Illini trust him to potentially be the starter with the ball in his hands? So I think he'll be the starter, but what Brad told me was that he's not necessarily going to have the ball in his hands a mm. ton. He's not; They're not going to run it like a traditional point guard. Uh, they're going to have different guys initiating offense. Yep. You know, you're going to see Terrence Shannon, I think. I think he's going to be their best player and leading scorer. He, he's a culture guy that just wasn't – honestly, he wasn't really uh, featured at Texas Tech, which nobody is offensively, and he was also hurt a lot last year. So I think Shannon's going to be great. Meyer, it's going to be interesting to, to see what he does. Uh, they've got some good freshmen. As you said, Scott Clark, probably the most pivotal one, but they got a kid, Ty Rogers, who's an absolute killer, like just tough. He's just, he's not going to put up huge offensive numbers, but I think every game he's going to get like eight or 10 points, five or six boards, a couple assists, couple steals, and just give them toughness and, and versatility. Coach Underwood also talked about how much faster this team's going to play. They want to try to score within seven seconds on the shot clock. Robbie, what kind of advantage does that give Illinois in the Big Ten? With their personnel, a huge one. You know, I think what Gio said about them defensively is totally accurate. And him bringing up the, I don't know what you even call it. It was like the the suicide blitz defense. Of yeah, like, I don't know what that was. Being so <laughs> far up your line. And I don't think it will be like that, but I think they might. Throw in some some full court pressure. I think, yep. like Gio said, they're going to switch five ways, and and they're going to make it really uncomfortable to run offense. And in transition, they're they're going to let those guys get out and and be in the open court. Matthew Meyer, you know, I, I had a lot of Baylor games his freshman sophomore year when I was doing more Big Twelve, and there's not many dudes where you're watching the warm ups and and he's taken off from just inside the free throw line, cocking it back and just hammering it. You know, yep. he he is that type of athlete. Now the question for me is, is he healthy? And I think with Matthew Meyer, sometimes the question also is how interested is he? Um, if he's engaged, he's really good. I saw him in the NCAA tournament in Fort Worth last year, and he was their best player against Carolina. Almost brought him brought him back. They were down huge. Terrence Shannon, I think, is going to have a terrific year. R.J. Melendez um, is a guy that could certainly break out. I, I really like his game. Um, how how I, important do you think? The, the Luke Goody injury is out probably it's, at it's, least the that matter. He's a shot maker. He's, he's another guy with size. That, that hurts him. Um, I, Ultra guy, Gio, too. Gio mentioned Coleman Hawkins. That, to me, is going to be incredibly interesting. Last year, if you watched Coleman play, when they were playing a directional school, he looked great. Early in the season, they're, they're playing people that aren't very good. Oh. He, he's a little loose with it. Yeah. And sometimes you can get away with that, but against good people – now, I'm really interested to see what Coleman Hawkins is adding in this offseason. He could end up making that big jump, but he, he I don't think he'll me. make a big one. I he, think he'll he, make he an incremental me, one. I, I just think when you're playing good people, I, I don't trust him yet. Yep. Yeah. When you say he's not going to make a big jump, is it going to be a Goodman-sized vertical jump or a Robbie Hummel-sized vertical <laughs> jump when it comes down to it? Man, Jeff, well, first of all, Jeff just hating on the work that Coleman Hawkins has put in this summer. Not no, that I'm, much, I'm just saying people got him as like this big breakout guy who's going to go from averaging five to 15. I think it's going to go from five to 10. Look, his skill set can make you 
salivate over him. Sure, I mean, with yeah. his size, and you you watch him against certain teams last year. I, I did their first game of the year, and I was like, man, Coleman Hawkins is bringing the ball up because yeah. I think Trent Frazier was out, and all their guards were hurt. So they were playing Coleman Hawkins at the five defensively, and he was bringing the ball up. There, there's not many guys that can do that in college basketball. But at the same time, man, when, when, the, when it got to Big Ten play and you had to grind it out and you had to be physical and you had to be disciplined, that's where there was a lot of fall off there for me. How much credit can you give him defensively because he does provide that switchability now because he is athletic, can guard on the perimeter, and now Illinois can do a lot of different things on that end of the floor. Yeah, playing him at the five compared to Kofi, it's it's a much different look. Now, there's pros and cons to Kofi moving on, but with Coleman Hawkins, yes, every ball screen doesn't have to be drop coverage. You can now switch. You, you can hard hedge. You can blitz. You can do a lot of different things with him there. But, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a different animal right there, and I think we're going to get into that. Is the Kofi departure good, bad, indifferent, whatever? But Coleman Hawkins does give them the ability to be versus defense. Well, let's, let's take it there, Robbie. While we're on the subject, Geo, Kofi Coburn, a legendary player for Illinois, is going to go down as one of the all-time greats. What are the pros of him being gone, or what are the cons of him lo- leaving the program? Geo, did we lose you? Say that again, guys. Sorry. Man, he's got other things too. Multitasking at his finest. Uh, Kofi no, Coburn. My, uh, the fire alarm was going off in my the building. Fire alarm. <laughs> was, hey, stay safe. Don't, don't risk it all for this podcast. Yeah, to risk it all. <laughs> <laughs> I was dedication. muted though. I was good. I was muted. Yeah, we did. You guys, you guys didn't hear it going off. No, no, we didn't hear the fire alarm. Was... Oh, perfect. Uh, perfect. Shout out to the guys doing the production. Then they they muted me real quick. Fire alarm. Okay, so here's a fire drill. Kofi Coburn, pros and cons of him leaving Illinois. I think I think there's definitely some some cons to it. Obviously, I mean, a guy like Kofi Coburn coming in, uh, you know, just a big guy down low. You can always feed him. You know, no matter what what you're gonna get from him, you're gonna get a double double every night. I think the cons for Illinois without Kofi Coburn, I mean, the pros without him is uh, you know, ball screen coverage. Like for us, whenever we played against Illinois, we always knew Kofi was gonna be in a deep drop. Like. So for Deal me, Baker, just, pull up 15 feet. Pull up. Exactly. Counted. Exactly. You know, and it, and it was honestly automatic. We didn't really need to run much offense. We just knew we had to get Kofi in a ball screen action. So I think without that right team, they're going to be able to guard a lot better this year. I think. I like the fact, honestly, they're a better regular season team with Kofi. But in the, in the tournament, I like their chances to go to the second weekend because I think again, defensively, you've got the switch ability. Um, You saw how teams – now, certain teams can do it and certain teams can't take advantage of Kofi, right? You need need bigs to be able to pull them out a little bit. You need to be able to put them in ball screens. Most teams can do that now. So I honestly think they have a better chance of going deeper in the tournament without Kofi Coburn. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but I I think it's true. All right, you you guys hit the pick-and-roll defense. Uh, You hit the the switching pressure defense. I I will say one less foul or poor foul shooter on the floor because he was a 62% career free throw shooter and a game problem. I think the biggest thing you guys didn't say was that for drivers, the lane now opens up, right? For that for that length, you now have the ability to get into the paint, and there's not a seven-foot man parked on the block. Now, the cons, I mean, let's be real. This dude averaged 20 and 10. How many people in this yeah. <laughs> thing, yeah. podcast have averaged 20 and 10 in the Big Ten? None of us. Right. Uh, while shooting's almost 60% from the field last season, like Jeff said, you could pump people with his size. And this is a two-time consensus All-American. I mean, like, that's pretty crazy to be like, are there pros and cons to him not he being did it against league? men in the league? Like, that's the yeah, thing. Yeah, with Zach Eady and, and right. you know, Hunter Dickinson and Trace right. Jackson Davis. And also the, the physical intimidation aspect of it where it's like, all right, this dude's enormous. He, he can physically punk us. But with that being said, it is a valid conversation. Is this a pros or cons deal? So I I go both ways. I, I'm not sure. I mean, I think Kobe Coburn is a great player. I wish I ever tw- 20 and 10. <laughs> that would be – that's balling. <laughs> but I, I don't know <laughs> pros and cons. It's it's really fascinating to talk about. Painter might wish the same, Robbie. He probably does. He, probably does <laughs> he wanted him to rebound a little bit more. Robbie was a little soft. That was a good rebound. Uh, details, details. 